Welcome to the From Concealment Podcast, the show for firearm enthusiasts who like to shoot, train, carry, and compete. Get ready for some shooting and sight, firearm and accessory reviews, and of course, insight on concealed carry. And now, broadcasting from behind enemy lines in the From Concealment studio, it's Pete Mitchell and Dan Sams. Hey, Freedom Nation, this is Pete Mitchell. And, uh, I am living my best life. I love it. Tell them what you got there in your hot little hand. Oh, man. I've uh, My wife got me the Mantis X10 Elite for my birthday. Uh, by the way, way more than we normally do for birthday gifts. This was this was a big deal. Um, but I have used it every day other than yesterday. It was the Lord's Day, and I took a break from shooting. I have used it every day. Um, I've got, I think I'm at 1,300 shots through it. Probably more than that, actually. Um when was the last time you burned a thousand rounds in a week? Uh, and that was all dry fire though, right? All dry fire. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So um, I'm loving it. We can, we can talk about it some, um, I don't know. Do you, should we talk about this first or should we talk about the other stuff first? Ah, we started down this path. Let's talk about this and we'll get to the fun stuff later. All right. So a little, the Mantis X10, um, it's just incredible. You guys, uh, I, I cannot compare it to the other versions uh, the X10 Elite uh, is just something special. So it uh, comes in a little nice little pretty box and you open up the box and there's this little tiny foam piece and inside it is this tiny little piece of tech. Uh, you can kind of, well, those of you who watch the video, we don't really put out the video. <laughs> Give them we, don't, we don't put out the video, do we? Um, <laughs> it, uh, it, it's got a little button on it, makes it really easy to put on either a weaver rail or a Picatinny rail. Um, And if you don't have a rail on your gun, it's got a little tiny piece of of weaver rail. Well, that might be Picatinny. In any case, it fits on both with a little sticker that you can stick to the bottom of your mag or the bottom of your gun, whatever. Uh, So that works well. And then they've also got a nice little uh, thing for like if you were shooting kind of a hunting rifle, little thing to go on the barrel clamps in um, with some spacers. Comes with a sticker, comes with all the alum wrenches you needed, uh, a little charger for your USB charging. Um, nice little thing, man. So I put this on the night I got it, fooled around with a little bit, loved it automatically. And the next day I probably put, I don't know, probably did 250 rounds. Uh, the next day I did another 250. Um, and I've done that much or more pretty much every day. And what's, what's happening is it's taking me through very, I mean, I can do all kinds of open training, but it's taking me through these various drills. Um, I have a, a friend just came behind me. Hey, I'm in the middle of recording. You need to go out. Nope. Yeah. Um, my dog's sorry. like running around like it's like free for all yeah. in my office. So you know. I know, it's crazy times. Yeah. All right. Sorry about that. Anyway, it's take. I'm taking it through uh, the various things. So I did a pistol, basic pistol course. There's a basic rifle course, and um, it it's doing me pretty well. So I'm I'm moving on to the advanced pistol. Just finished the basic rifle today. Are you doing holster um, pulls, or is it all already from the holster? Um, no, there's holster pull drills, and okay. that's that's where that's where a couple of these things get a little tricky. If you don't have a rail, well, I shouldn't say that. Um, if you don't have a holster that will that makes room for a light or a laser, um, you can't practice holster drills with this on the regular rail. Can't you put so it then, on the mag though? Isn't that that's, the- that's exactly what I did? So on those, yeah. in that case, you got to put it on the mag. Well, my um, my regular everyday carry does not have a rail, which is a little bit strange. So I'm practicing from the mag anyway. Right. The only time that becomes an issue is in the mag change drills then it doesn't know what's going on. You take the thing off of there and it's going all around and it's, it's confused. So in mag change drills, I'm actually switching over to another gun that is not my everyday carry gun, but I'm practicing mag changes with that one just because otherwise it won't recognize. So that's not really a problem with them. That's just a reality. Uh, it's, it's a motion sensor. And so it's got to go somewhere. And uh, so I, I probably should just get a holster that makes room for this so I can practice that way. But um, great little piece of tech, man. Um, 
I am I am really really impressed. There's a hostage drill that I thought was really cool, where you draw, uh, you have to draw and shoot in a certain amount of time, and then you also have to shoot with a certain level of, of proficiency. And um, it's a great drill, worthwhile. So you're practicing pulling from concealment. Um, you're practicing getting on target super fast. Uh, it's great stuff, man. Um, yeah, seems like there was something else I was going to. I mean, I could talk for a long time on all the really cool stuff going on in this, but the fact that it, you're making these benchmarks along the way, you feel like you're doing something. You feel like you're earning something. Now it has a timer, um, right? The app, like it'll do a beep, and then yeah. you got to pull the trigger by the next beep. So yeah, you can you can actually work on getting your draw from concealment and trigger pulled in a decent amount of time, which should be yes. right around one and a half seconds. Yep. as kind of like a minimum. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm inching close to that. Um, it's interesting. I'm learning right away. What kind of shirt I wear makes a big difference for me. Drawing no kidding. Um, Tell me what you're noticing on the shirt. Um, if, well, I like to wear fitted shirts. I like to look nice. I like to have kind of that trim feel to it. And um, I've got a couple of shirts that they're just trim. And so when I'm pulling up on it, it's just too close to my body and a little bit of looseness helps me when I'm, cause I've got it's one motion, to pull the shirt up one motion to pull the gun. And uh, if the shirt's a little bit snug or wants to snag on my holster slows me down. Mm. So um, working on that, I could probably work on a, on a faster straight up pull. There's probably a couple of things I could do for that, but um, are you still yeah, carrying appendix? I am. Yep. Okay. Yep. So uh, that was cool. Man, um, uh, what else could we say about the thing? Um, I would say other than mag changes, it, it keeps, uh, I was doing mag change practice with my AR and it keeps there because of the weight, like it's, it's measuring that click. And so what was happening is I was, and I have an ambidextrous uh, mag release because I'm left eye dominant. And it seemed like when I would hit that probably 50% of the time, it would think that was the trigger. So it would mark me as like 0.25 seconds. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I did not change the mag and pull the trigger that fast. Right. Um, so other than that, um, man, the thing does really, really well. Um, no problem. It seems to uh, notice things well. And I'm already seeing a huge difference. So I, when I first put the thing on, I was shooting at, um, you know, some of it's getting used to it, but I was shooting at probably... 60 to 70 percent uh proficiency and with a few 80s um now i'm regularly shooting well above 80 with plenty hitting up in the 90s and um i feel pretty good about that um my draw speed is down incredibly um i'm much much faster on the draw and uh i would just say all around i am a much better shooter this week than i was last week i probably honestly i probably practice more on this gun in the uh in the last week than i have the entire time i have owned this gun mm. um man i'll tell you i'm trying to think the last time i went to the range and and spent and and well and did more than i don't know 200 trigger pulls right i might do 200 300 max a lot of times i'm just doing 100 because i'm conserving ammo right so think about all that and then i wasn't it wasn't like i was going shooting every day so I factor that out. Um, I mean, just I'm doing exponentially more training and I'm getting immediate feedback on it. Right. So you, you know how when you're shooting and it's like, ooh, that felt like I pulled a little bit, but then you go down and you look at the target and you're looking at like, I don't know, 20 holes in the target. Which one was the one where you had a bad pull? You're like, well, you're probably going to look and say, well, that one's a little bit off, but you're really guessing on this one. You shoot and you know how that feeling you get where you're like, oh, I didn't do that one right. You immediately get the feedback on it. And it, it I mean, you know, like you immediately know, and then it's going to tell you, well, you were thumbing the trigger a little bit or you were, and it's, it's not perfect on what it's telling you you're doing wrong, but it's giving you some pretty good feedback. Right. Because um, it's using the stats. It's using when this happens, yeah. typically this is the problem. Yep. Um, and it also it gives you a nice little ego boost when you do any shot above 90 uh, proficiency. It's like, good shot. You can do it above 95 and it's like, great shot. I'm like, thank you, Siri. Glad to have your help. Nice. Um, but yeah, I'm highly recommending it. Here's the other fun thing. You can join groups on here and you can challenge one another. You can watch what each other is doing. 
I think the Freedom Nation needs to get this so we can friend each other on here. Because right now, it's me and some stranger I've never heard of that's on there. Um, super fun, though, guys. Like, you you need to get on it. So, Pete, you probably got a profile, even though it's not for the Mantis X10, right? I have no idea anymore. Yeah. Well, you want to know something fun. After you, after you complete the proficiencies, it wants to, like, send you a badge or whatever. Oh, nice. So, they gamify I start... It. I start to put my address in and I'm like, wait a minute. I don't know that I want the government to know that I'm at this level of proficiency. (laughs) And so I didn't think about the fact that they're sending me something. And so I put in, let's just say I put in a very creative name and a very creative address. And I'm now I'm feeling a little bad for the headache that I probably caused for the people at Mantis. So when I passed the rifle proficiency, I went ahead and put my accurate information in there because I'm like, well, feds already know about me. So might as well get my Velcro patch or whatever it is they're going to send me. We'll see. So did you stick that on your rifle, too? And you did the training on the rifle? Yeah. Oh, in fact, way easier than on the pistol um, because it goes right on the rail. Um, Now, you need to go into the settings and you need to let them know if you're shooting left or right handed. You need to let them know if you've got it facing forward or backward or whether it's on the top or the bottom of your gun, but you give them all the details and it's, it tracks it pretty accurately. Um, yeah, I'm impressed. And it all comes down to the movement of your finger, you know, like, or of your arms. Interesting. So, yeah. It kind of makes I me want to get a, a reset trigger, but I don't, I'm like, should I, should I practice with like what the trigger really feels like? Or do I get something that makes my life easier when I'm doing dry fire practice? Yeah. So I've been wrestling through that because the reality is I have to reset the trigger every time. Right. Right. So what I'm, I'm partially, I got that dry fire mag. So, I mean, yeah, I could use that potentially. That's not bad. Well, I've, I've just got this little bit of like, I'm afraid I'm going to develop the habit of every time doing my half, you know, half, cock for the for the uh, trigger reset so yeah that's in the back of my mind and there's a couple of things like like cadence drills you can't really do like that Mm. you know like you can't do a cadence drill fire steady if you're racking it every time right so there's a few things you can't do uh one thing i will say is it is designed for both dry fire and live fire right so you absolutely can take it to the range do live fire practice and um and get yourself uh, some real time data on that as well. Um, great stuff though, man, I am highly recommending it. And I'm, I'm saying like freedom nation, when you get it, uh, you got to jump on, tell us that you've got it. Let us know what your username is. We'll go on and we'll challenge one another. Um, try to make each other better on the Mantis app. What's funny is I didn't want to spend any money before I move. And that's so tempting to me. I'm like, just $250. It's it. What's $250. That ain't going to stop me from moving. $250 to you is what $2 and 50 cents is to me. You should just get it. Not not quite, (laughs) but I like, I like where your head's at. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Well, here's the other thing, getting my wife excited about it. I, I think she's going to start practicing. She's she needs to carry way more than she does, man. Mm. But yeah. Anyway, it's a blast. Um, it is. And then here's what I'm doing is I've got my morning routine of stuff I get done. And then usually early afternoon or even late morning, I'll spend just a few minutes practicing. And you know what? If all I did was do 25 rounds, I'm doing way more than that. But like that would be good. Like it's keeping your proficiency up. And right. so uh do it. You guys, I I think it's well worth the money and I don't know, factor out 1300 rounds. And if I, well, and the thing is, is that's forever. Like it's two fifty forever. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's like 500 rounds in today's dollars. That's it. But you're going to do this. Like if you did two fifty rounds a day, think of what, how that would improve everything for you. Yep. Two fifty a day. And you can do that with that. Yeah. I mean, you could do it without it too, but I mean, the feedback, the gamification of it, the drills, it makes it more fun. Like one of the so, reasons why I don't do a lot of dry fires, it's so boring. Yeah. But this is, makes it fun. Right. Well, and then here's, it's doing things like uh, on this. I mean, you can see it, Pete, not anybody yep. else can, but it's actually showing when I do a, a, a set of, I don't know how many shots this was, eight shots. 
it's telling me where I'm pulling the most. And so I can see like over time. Okay. So over eight shots, I was definitely pulling, pulling to the right there, um, which is interesting because I shoot right handed with a pistol and I shoot left handed with the rifle. I consistently pull a little bit to the right on the pistol mm. and a little to the left on the rifle. Um, but paying attention to all those things. And um, here's the one thing I would also add. There is a full, what is it called? Uh, it's called like Mantis Academy. It's a whole separate app and there's a whole separate system that has um, laser and tr- I think there's a trigger reset in there. There's a whole thing there. Um, I don't have that. Um, and so a lot of the gaming type of stuff there is, is part of that. This still has a lot of, um, you could call it gamified. It's doing drills and it's moving you along. But I'm not, I don't know, it's, 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 not, it's not like a video game. It's, a, it's tracking my training and encouraging me to move it along. So it's still gamified, but not, I always want to be clear, it's, it's a little distinctive than their other app, uh, which is much more fun, I suppose. So nice. I love up, everybody it. recommending it. Pete, let me know when you get it. I'm, I'm going to be so excited. I, uh, I think it's interesting. Um, and we probably talked about this last week, how occupied Democrats were like, you know, they've got, they're totally against guns. And then they're like, Oh, Ukraine is giving 10,000 fully automatic weapons to their citizens to fight. This is the way. And it's like, do you not realize yeah. that's what we're fighting for yourself? here in the U S <laughs> but anyway my my point with all of that is uh i was thinking about this the other day i don't trust any government i mean if i don't trust our government why in the world would i trust ukraine or russia or anything now i i bring that up because there's a lot of pushback on ukraine and first of all what russia's doing is bad right they're just being yeah. typical bullies trying to take over I'm not looking at Ukraine and going, oh, they're perfect children and they're just getting beat by the bully. It's like, no, they're, I mean, first of all, uh, Hunter got a big paycheck from, uh, you know, what was it, an oil company in Ukraine? Didn't Romney's family, same thing? Like a lot of our politicians were getting paid by Ukraine, Ukrainian companies. And it's like, dude, what the heck is going on over here? Like there's something fishy going on. Shady. Yep. Yeah, well, and and do you know about their like, I I gotta be really careful how I say this. But there are Amer- American military guys, there are veterans that are have signed contracts for, to get paid five grand a day to go and fight for Ukraine. I want to know where is Ukraine getting the money for five grand a day, right? Like this is not hearsay. This is like I have direct connection with some of these guys. Um, I don't exactly approve of it. I wonder who's paying acquaintances. What's that? I wonder who's paying it. Is that NATO money? I mean, that's what I want. U.S. money is Is U.S. paying. You know, since they can't go direct, they're just paying the contractors. Is it World Economic Forum? Like, think about five thousand dollars a day for a country that size, right? Like, like and how many people you need a day? Yeah, yeah, to make any kind of dent at all yeah well now this this is the other thing that we're learning uh well first of all and then think about how many veterans in the u.s are like be nice to go and fight for something because i'm don't want to like i'm happy to not deal with our president right now um and then five thousand dollars a day for a guy like you know for a vet who's maybe five thousand dollars a day i'm going and i got no training Yeah. Well, they won't let us come. I found out. Um, <laughs> you already found out. You uh, yeah, I, find out. I wasn't going to go, but I did find out that uh, apparently they want somebody who has legit, you know, training. But five grand a day. But what if I print off a certificate that I find on the Internet? Can I use that as my legit training and go? Just, you know what, Pete? I'll certify you. You certify me. I, I, I Five grand a day, dude. I'm telling you, for five grand, there's a lot I would do for five grand a day. Mm-hmm. You know, hey. they. They have that line, every man has its price. It's just that some people go, oh, my price is so high, you can never reach it. That reached it for me. <laughs> Five grand a day. Boom, you I'm, got it. I'm trying to do that math. $5,000 a day over 30 days. I mean, that's I mean, that's a lot of money. That's like you go and fight for 30 days, right? That's that's a way to pay off those student loans, man. I mean, student that's- loans. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Could you imagine your taxes? Oh. Oh, yeah. 
Well, but hey, if you procure a Russian tank while you're there, you don't have to pay Ukrainian taxes on it. Do you see so is that, that what they're saying? Is that part of the deal? Yeah, that's like the like the president of Ukraine announced that like if you steal Russian tanks from the Russians, you do not have to declare that on your taxes. Like that was a, that, that's legit. Like that happened. The I fact mean, I that think he would he, even have to do that in a time of war. It just shows you how corrupt government is. Hey, no, let me tell you, the IRS isn't going to come after you. Dude, we're at war. <laughs> Screw you. You know taxes. what, though? The IRS is, um, I mean, like they have plans for how to procure taxes in a post-apocalyptic scenario. Shut like they, up. Yeah, Are you this serious? Is a, this is a real thing. Yeah. Yeah. You should look up, like they they have a training manual for how we will, if, if things go crazy, how they're going to still get uh, what they think is theirs. Um, which is why, man, you know, everybody needs to invest in a wood chipper. I mean, you need to all be I'm ready. saying is you and I have been reading that a American book series. Yeah. And all I'm thinking of is the mailman and uh, the mailman yep. ain't going to live very long is all I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. But I mean, that's that's he wrote that. That in, I'm convinced, because that was part of the I mean, that's that's part of their role. Um, so, yeah, you need your wood chipper, by the way, to chop up the, the brush. So that like the brush can be used to burn, you know, fires to keep you and your family warm. I'm just making that clear. Um, anyway. And make sure it's not uh, electronically run. It's got to be all gas powered. Uh, no electronics. We don't want that EMP messing up your wood chipper. Which, by the way, I was looking at um, pre-1985 vehicles uh, because a lot of times pre-1985 is going to be your like emp impervious kind of deal depends like it's depends on who's making it or whatever but pre-1985 you're normally pretty safe dude i might as well buy a new car <laughs> like oh really like like i mean i was a lot of a lot of stuff that's in good shape and ready to run right, right. like 30 grand 25 grand and i'm like my my car out there that i bought like post lease right i paid 19 grand for it <laughs> so i'm like Man, to buy a car that is almost as old as me, <laughs> but to be able to know that it will run if things go crazy. So I don't know. I might I might still look for the old something that needs some work and, and work on it myself. But what a time. I, I need to hang out with some of your friends who can teach me how to start a Humvee. And, and I can teach you that, Pete. We well. should teach that to the Freedom Nation right now. So there's a little there's a little toggle switch uh, kind of to the left of the steering wheel. That um, because it's a diesel engine, right? You have to turn that from all the way left to middle, and you wait. There's a light that, after a little bit, comes on to let you know. I mean, it's like starting a, a diesel truck, right? After that light, I've never started a diesel truck. It's not like I know. All right. Oh, that's all right. So it's easy though. So you stand there because there's no keys for the Humvees. So like, turn the the toggle to up from left to up. Wait for a little bit. Light comes on, or the light goes off. In any case, it'll indicate. And then you turn it the rest of the way, engine starts, you just got yourself a Humvee. Really? That's all it takes? It's really easy. Dude, wow. you had to make it easy. <laughs> I mean, I love these guys, but they had to make it easy. They had to make it easy. So did you see, though, conversely, did you see the TikTok video from the uh, the Ukrainian like TikTok influencer who did a whole video on how to start a Russian tank? Well, I heard like, about it. I didn't see it, but I, heard I, I watched it. the video. Now it's in Ukrainian or whatever, so I couldn't understand it. But she's like, I mean, she does a good job. Like she's explaining each thing. I mean, I'm assuming it's she starts it up and runs this tank. But I mean, she video this switch to this switch. Then this thing it looked a little bit complicated, but I'm like, well done. I'm like. TikTok influencer using your platform for some good. Dude, I tell you, man, I watching this stuff go down, I'm thinking how corrupt these big tech companies are Yeah, because of the crap that they ban in the United States and the crap they don't ban from Russia and et cetera. The Taliban, the Taliban, Al Qaeda. Yeah. Well, did you see that? Like Facebook has let it be known that they're temporarily allowing videos of violence against Russians. That was a not the B article. I'm like, what in the world? Yeah, it should scare us. It should concern us. I should say how quickly they shift who you're supposed to hate. Yeah. like They're canceling like Russian composers 
that have been dead for 200 years. But you're like not allowed to listen to that, right? They're they're making they're building this Russian hatred. And I'm like, this who what? Why? Like, I don't even, I'm not even a fan of the sanctions. I'm like, because you know what? If I'm trading with somebody, you know, I have I have no reason to get into a fight with my barber because, well, we I, I work for him, we have a whole you know exchange going on. I don't want to start a fight with him. And, and not that I need to, but trade increases peace. And so I understand the mentality behind sanctions sometimes, but also who it's hurting is not Putin. And I don't think he cares. Um, right. Not that. Well, much. look at look at uh, Cuba. It's not like Castro's family has ever been hurt. It's exactly. the average everyday person in Cuba who's making twenty five dollars a week. Yeah. And that's not enough to feed their family. Yep. Yeah. Whereas, man, can you imagine if we opened up trade to a country like that and we said, you know what? You trade with us however you want to. We don't care about your government. Your government doesn't care about you. You just find a way. What if we legalize the black market with Cuba? All right. Like, get us those cigars, man. You guys find a way. We'll buy them from you. Can you imagine? Like, that's how you export freedom. You export freedom by importing cigars. Interesting. Mark my words. I wonder how that would work. I wonder if it would work. Well, the, first of all, the free market finds a way. I mean, you can get Cuban cigars. You're not supposed to. You can. No, I've had right? Cuban cigars. Sure. Yeah. So, like, think about if I if usually get them I, in Mexico. <laughs> yeah. But think about it, if I was in a position where I'm like, OK, Mr. Cuban, you you take on the risk with your government to get them here. But if I didn't have to worry about my government to be able to pay a premium to those guys and have Cuban cigars in my cigar cigar shop, man, I'm. I mean, I know that I can make money on them. I don't have a cigar shop, to be clear. But like the free market in cinema. See, now, if you did that in conjunction with cryptocurrency, it could work. The problem is if you're paying them traditionally, the government's going to take their money. The government's going to find out where they got it stashed, take it. But with crypto, I think you're on to something there, you know? Yep. Which we should talk about this. Do you know that we are potentially six months away from a Fed coin? Did you? you I didn't know it was six months away. So the the executive order is that they're supposed to research this with the idea that they could have something rolling out in six months, um, which is concerned, by the way. Um, I think Fed coin is a really bad thing. I think Fed is a really bad thing. I think the federal government is a really bad thing. Yeah, I wonder what that means they're going to do to all the other current crypto. That's the concern. Crypto took kind of a kind of a dump once that news came out it's been a dump um, since i mean my my crypto account was at 10 grand slightly over 10 maybe at 11 now i'm down at like 55 i'm like oh, come on go back up <laughs> go yeah. back up yeah yeah i'm trying to decide if, if this is a good time to buy um because it's a little bit low um i don't know it's this is, this is the other thing i bring up I, I know we're down some rabbit trails here but Historically, the United States has not going to gone to war with the worst people or even the people that were the most threat to us. They've gone to war with countries that rejected the U.S. dollar. Muammar Gaddafi was our homeboy. And then he rejected the U.S. dollar and we took him out. Uh, Saddam Hussein was our homeboy. And then he rejected the U.S. dollar and we took him out. Um, these were not good dudes, but we we parlayed with them as long as they played the dollar game. And so then I'm like, okay, so if we really got on board with crypto and we got off the US dollar, what's what are they going to do to the American citizens to get us back on their centralized controlled currency? And I think we're about to see what they're about to do. And it's going to involve that Fed coin. And so that's mm. why I'm like, I, I believe in the concept of cryptocurrency. Um, but I, I'm afraid they're going to make it more painful than we want it to be. I'm still for it, but... Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm just. I'm it does. Unfortunately. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, and here's. Uh, so we're in church yesterday. I love our church, man. We get done. I'm preaching through Revelation right now. And of course you that, are. Yeah. I don't. I believe it or not. I've avoided teaching on Revelation because there's so much kookiness going on. And I'm I am leaning now towards a partial preterist position. So I don't. That's funny. That's that's kind of my view on it. Oh, Pete. Okay. 
And he here's the thing: is people have no idea what we're talking about when you just said preterist. They're like, I know, uh, I have no idea what he's talking yeah. about. You know what though? We'll give a quick plug. First of all, everybody should read the book "When the Man Comes Around" by Doug Wilson. Right, great book, Pete. You need to read this book. It's a pretty fast read. Um, right, look, I'll just flip through it like that. Yeah. Do um, they have it on Audible? Because I got a couple um, of credits. They might, or they might have it on Canon Press's uh, app, which I highly recommend. But the way he just says, like, well, here's where this imagery is used everywhere else in scripture. So if that symbolism is what it's always meant, seems like it should mean that here. And then he's like, here's where Jesus says this generation shall not pass away until these things take place. And he's like, don't we believe Jesus? And then, by the way, pretty much all this took place in AD 66 through 70. It is uncanny, the details. So anyway, I'm yeah, leaning no, that's, that position. That's kind of been my thought on Revelation. Yeah. Yeah, you should. Yeah, you should read the Doug Wilson book. When the man comes around is wonderful. It'll it'll help you out on that. And it's a quick read anyway. uh, But we get done with that. And then we have some barbecue because our church hangs out together and we're talking about just weird stuff going on. And so um, somebody brought up that like, hey, I'm all for cryptocurrency. But have you ever this is actually my friend's wife. She's a sweetheart. And she's as tinfoil hat as any of us. Um, and she says, isn't it strange that we still don't know who invented, uh, you know, like we still don't really know who invented Bitcoin. She's like, have you checked out some of the whole thing about the IP addresses related to when it, I'm like, no, no? What, what are you talking about? She's like, it just might be something that was invented by the CIA. What? I'm like, what? And she starts walking me through, like, not in great detail. There's too much. And she's got, like, seven kids, plus, well, six and one on the way. But she's walking through, like, to our, you know, our group of, like, guys who all think like us. And ironically, her husband is the one who's, like, the most cautious. He's like, I don't know. But then he gets on board because she's right. But um, she brought up some really interesting things related to, like, okay, the, the early IP address, uh, early IP addresses we can trace to to some of this is very very close to CIA offices. Um, just she's like doesn't mean the CIA did it, but it sure looks shady. So then I'm like, oh crap, what are they doing? She's like, I think they were just using it to you know do their secret stuff because like and it's even easier than dollars, right? I mean the whole point is you can't trace it in the same way. So she's like, yeah, and so I'm like, oh. This would allow this would have allowed the Iran Contra thing to go so much smoother for them, <laughs> and um, yeah, don't know that that's true, but I thought that was very interesting. Well, it's interesting because the CIA always likes to have that dark money on the side that they can use for whatever they want to use and don't need to ask Congress for. And my gosh, if they were like the original Bitcoin miners, and there's, I mean. It's billions and billions of dollars now. Mm-hmm. And that original, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, what's what's the guy's name who invented Bitcoin? Uh, it will, because we don't know who he really yeah, is. Yeah, but, but, really, but the name that he uses is uh, yeah. Socket. Oh, I can't remember off the top of my head. But um, yeah, there's billions and billions. He was the original Bitcoin miner. Mm-hmm. And that money's never been touched. It's just sitting there. And I'm like. Satoshi Yaka, Naka, Nakamoto. Yeah. Yeah. Satoshi. Yeah. So that's interesting. That yeah. that's really interesting. I, I I would look at that and almost go, yeah, but how could someone at the CIA come up with the concept mm-hmm. of Bitcoin? Because like what was so brilliant about that particular um idea. And people got to understand this. It's it's the double spend problem. So basically, whenever you download an image off the internet or you get emailed a PDF, it's a copy, right? It's not the original. It's a copy of it. And so every time someone downloads it, they're just downloading copy after copy after copy after copy. The problem is if your money is digital and I spend, you know, I give Dan Sam's a hundred bucks, I'm technically giving him a copy of it. Mm-hmm. And now I can give that same hundred dollars to uh, Peyton Jones mm-hmm. and uh, you know, I could keep going down the line and that was what the blockchain fixed. Yeah. And I look at that and I'm like, okay, who like, and it was a simple concept too. Like the white paper on Bitcoin is like eight pages long. I mean, it's not like some long thing. It's like, this is how you do it. And yeah. this solves the double spend problem. And that way, you know, when you spend money, it's only spent one time. And yep. now that guy's got it. 
and now he can spend it and go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, could I could I envision someone at the CIA thinking that through? I don't know. No, but here's what I can think of them tracking some guy coming up with an idea on his computer. Right. And right. then and then and then approaching that guy and saying, like, you stay completely anonymous and we get this much. And then you just do your thing. I'm, I'm thinking more of it being co-opted very early on as opposed to them actually like inventing it. Right. That's my expectation more than anything. Um, and here's the thing, because it's because of what it is, the Fed doesn't like it. Right. Because the Fed, the whole reason the Fed exists is so that they can do the copy game that you were talking about earlier. This right. keeps the Fed from doing that, which that's, by the way, when they talk about a, a federal cryptocurrency or a Fed coin, like I'm, we can almost guarantee it's not going to be a true, if it's blockchain based, it's not going to be built around this concept because like they, that's not how they want it to be. Uh, but you think about like if the CIA is running Bitcoin, which I'm, of course they are, whether or not that was their idea or not, of course they're using it. Like this is what they do. And so imagine though, if they're making this stuff happen, um, they could just as easy one day say, yeah, that's not worth anything to us. And so like they could, to, to be able to cut off people that they're working with anytime they want to with no trace, not too bad for them. So, mm. yeah. Anyway, man, we're down some rabbit trails today, man. It's good fun, though. It's really I got good. my tinfoil hat. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm man, we should. Go. There's so many things. Are you watching like the CDC releasing this stuff that like now like four out of five COVID deaths are for our vaccinated people? What? I did not hear about that at all. I got to go with that. Yeah. Um, there's there was a report coming out of the UK. And let's just face it, there's not but so many people dying from COVID. Let's just acknowledge that. So, but like the fact that such a high percentage were dying who have had the, uh, some of them were like with the booster and everything, like three jabs. Um, Yeah. And I'd have to pull up. There's been, I read like three or four different reports on it, but I'd have to pull one of them up. Yeah. CDC is in publishing large portions of COVID data. It collects no kidding. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that was the other big thing. Yeah. Oh, of course. Pfizer CEO says fourth dose of COVID-19 vaccine will be needed. Yeah. Give me, give me more money. Of course. Yeah. Oh, so this is brings us back to the earlier thing. So you remember for a little while it was hate the people who don't wear masks. Then it was hate the unvaccinated. Now it's hate Russia. And it's like overnight, like who you're supposed to hate changes. And the the jumping around keeps people from thinking through, why do I hate this person? I heard this little bit of bad news, this little bit of thing I don't like. And now I've jumped like, so my hate is like dissociated, right? What Once that's fomented to a certain level, what if they just direct it to something really close to home? And that's, that's in the back of my mind. I'm like, I... Like you and I have a nuanced opinion, I would like to think about Ukraine, where I'm like, man, I think Ukraine's leadership is doing some good things and some bad things. And I think Putin, honestly, is doing a whole lot of bad things and a couple of good things. Right. And I feel bad for the citizens in both cases. Like I look at like I look at Vietnam. I'm like, you know what? There's some real shady proxy war stuff going on. And I don't really approve of the commies and I don't approve of the U.S. government, what they were doing. But I feel bad for those Vietnamese farmers and I feel bad for our soldiers that got sent over. Right. Um, I feel similar about most of the conflicts we've been in for the last however many years. Yeah. Right. Um, and so like I we can have this opinion where I'm like, well, that was cool and that was bad, and that was cool and that was bad. And um, and so it causes us some caution, right? Like, I mean, there's some of the stuff that came out of Ukraine that I'm like, that was really cool. Some of it, like it was propaganda, but it was cool. Some of it I'm like, well, that might be true, but the way they framed it was clearly propaganda, like the Miss Ukraine. With you know, with the M4 that ended up being a uh, an air rifle, not an air rifle. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, and here's the thing: she might be out there fighting. We knew those were staged pictures. Like, I mean, they were clearly set up as that. So, there's nothing wrong with saying like, "Hey, she's fighting on the line." Here's a picture of her with a gun. Oh, it's an airsoft gun. Well, okay, so that's propaganda. But maybe it's true that she's fighting, but we don't know because you're giving us all this propaganda. Uh, and but at least and- like, yeah. I was listening to this one dude 
who was explaining, like people don't realize we got a war going on in Yemen right now. What? And we're literally fighting alongside Al Qaeda. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's like uh, people don't understand our government is so corrupt. It has nothing to do with freedom. That's what they're going to spoon feed us. Oh, we're fighting for democracy. We're going to free these. No, that's not what any of this is about. Never has been. If we were fighting for freedom, it wouldn't look like it looks right now. We haven't declared war, which is what our Constitution says we have to do. Since World War II, Mm -hmm. we have not had a clear cut victory since World War II. Korea, Vietnam, uh, I mean, Afghanistan was obvious. Iraq, I mean, dude. I don't know. Yeah. It's sad, dude. Yeah. Now, can I make a couple of comments related to geopolitical things that I think are worth considering? You know, we've had this like fear in the back of our mind of like Russia being like this ridiculously like paid fighting force or not paid, like strong fighting force. Because, and the reality is, as we talked about, Russia's got a lot of propaganda going on. And as it turns out, they really weren't that ready to fight. They over. There's a huge difference between a volunteer military like what we have and a non voluntary military. Right. Like it's, it's night and day. Well, but even like, I mean, they're they're living off the propaganda. So like, even the way that they had designed their um, their tank armor, right? And they they were like, oh yeah, we'll be fine. Well, like, our javelin missiles, our javelin missiles, um, are cutting right through their tanks, man. Like that's so like things that like where they even thought their tech was on a certain level, or at least they'd said their tech was on a certain level. Even the like training of their military, like. I mean, I wouldn't want to go out and fight against them unless I had to, but they're not all big and bad and scary as we thought they were. And so that's just something worth noting. All of these countries uh, have a lot of propaganda going on. And um, so changes how we look like the fear level for Russia does not need to be what it is when a relatively small country is still holding them back. I mean, they are it's still looking pretty rough for them, but they're holding back. So Anyway. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, man, is there anything else we we're going to talk about today, Pete? I don't know. We, we went down so many rabbit holes. It's I kind know. of funny. It was fun, though. It was yeah. really fun. So um, can I um, can I just give a good pl- uh, plug for our dudes at Lake Erie Arm and give what is not an announcement, but is some helpful information? Because um, everybody's talking about this big facility that Lake Erie Arms is going to be building. Um, I, we've talked about those, of, those of you guys who are part of the freedom nation here in Northeast Ohio, you know, that this, you know, about this thing, um, it, you know, it's, we're going to have multiple hundred yard indoor ranges, uh, a three story tall indoor skeet shooting range, something like 25 pistol ranges and everything state of the art and then amazing store and, um, all kinds of, there's a restaurant in there. It's going to be incredible, but it's been one of these things we've had, you know, building for I'm not building on, but like preparing for, for years, information was leaked early that we didn't want out. So people were like, Oh, it must not be happening because it hasn't happened yet. Um, let me just tell you, man, is it happening? Um, and so, uh, we're going to be able to, we're very soon going to be able to buy memberships for the place. And, uh, so, uh, just, uh, keep your ear to the ground, look for some actual announcements coming up. Um, in the next couple of months, but, um, I'm excited. You guys, I was in a meeting last week where we were talking details. Um, and it'll be like nothing you've ever seen. There will be nothing like it in the world. Um, and, um, I'm looking forward to, um, I don't mean to just call out Bud's gun shop, but you know, you guys will watch the, uh, the videos of like Hickok 45 and whatever. And and Bud's gun shop is good to them. Good for them. If you go on a Bud's gun shop, it's pretty looking place that just didn't special. And they don't seem to care that you're there. Um, terrible customer service. I don't like it. Um, I think we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna replace Gun Shop. Uh, nice. Gun Shop. I think that's what's gonna happen. And we'll get some exciting things coming. So anyway, want to let everybody know, kind of a progress report. I can't make any official announcements, but just letting you know that, like, man, it is happening, happening. Um, no more like, yeah, one of these days. It's like, no, this is uh, 
documents have been signed. Things are moving forward and it's going to be incredible. Awesome. Um, so yeah, that was all I had for today, man. Check out learms.net and uh, here in a couple of months, you're going to see some really exciting news on there. So cool. All right, man. Well, we'll talk to everyone next week. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. You've been listening to the From Concealment Podcast with Pete Mitchell and Dan Sams. Be sure to tune in next week for more gun talk. Also, check out the From Concealment website for more shooting-related goodness at fromconcealment.com.